Hello world, how are you doing? So I'm here again with another live episode for you guys. I just got done sending all my shipments out. And I wanted to show you guys, see I've shown you guys how to actually collect Blue Galaris killifish eggs. A little bit how to breed them, but I haven't shown you guys how to actually hatch them. So I have some uh, eggs here ready to hatch. Let me flip you guys over. What's up everybody? Oh, flip it back. Alright, so in this container, it takes six weeks for them to actually hatch. So I write the dates on it. I didn't count them all, so I just put lots. Lots of cool people in the chat. What's up, everybody? But here you can see the really dark eggs. And this is what we're hatching today. So these have been sitting on this peat moss like this for six weeks now. And you can kind of see some where they have little eyeballs. And they call that being eyed up. You can actually see their eyes coming out of, of the eggs. So pretty much essentially all you got to do with this after six weeks from collecting the eggs. And I'll run with you guys real quick how you collect the eggs. Now I stuck them in substrate tanks with rocks and sand and stuff like that. But I found it best to breed them in bare bottom with uh, spawning mops on the bottom. And I usually do a trio, so two females and a male, and they'll just scatter their eggs all throughout there. You pull the mops out, you could actually pick the eggs straight off of the mop and uh, like roll them in your fingers, and they're really hard. Uh, you can't really bust them, so it's kind of crazy how they're like that. So you don't have to be real sensitive with the eggs and then you end up sticking it on the peat moss like this. You don't get real wet peat moss, you just want it barely damp. And you see there's quite a bit of eggs in here. Biggest problem with this is I'm not sure which tank I'm going to put them in. Because I actually got some juveniles, here's some juveniles. Blue Glorus starting to grow up. And they don't take very long to grow either, that's the beauty part of them. There's some real smaller fry here from an earlier batch. So this is like the third recent batch I uh, am hatching here in like the, maybe the last two or three weeks. And if you guys got questions about this too, I'm, I'm kind of looking at the chat when I can as it goes by. So we'll add a little bit of water. Let's go ahead and take this out actually. And usually I try to add water in there slower so that peat moss doesn't float up like that. But I kind of got a little overzealous being live here and all. But there you can really see the eyeballs. There's two little dots in the middle on that egg. Same with above it. Those are all little eyeballs. So they're, they're ready and they're waiting to come out. I'll go ahead and show you the uh, males. Right now I actually got them separated because I gotten three batches out of the this trio. So I want to try to get these females a little more fattened up to get better yield off of them. But there's the two females. And then the male, he's right here. I need to get a light on him. he'll pose for me or not get this light yeah I'm trying to breed some of them out for all you guys I know a lot of you guys are wanting them and I would love to get more as many of these out in the hobby as I can because it would be a shame for this species not to be around in a hobby granted they're kind of a labor of love to breed but they're still one of the coolest fish. And also, while we wait for the eggs, we'll go ahead and check them out real quick. Because you never know how fast they'll actually hatch. So let's see if there's any actually moving yet. I'm not seeing anything quite yet. They get some other fish in today too. I gotta try to figure out a home for them. 
got, uh, let's see, these are the uh, Red Albino, these are the AFTG line actually, the RREA, something like that, these are the bigger ones, they're pretty cool, got a trio of them, it's hard to pass them up when I saw them, because usually you got to get that line imported from somewhere, it's not often you see somebody in the states offer those. So I had to snag them up. Which I don't have any tanks for them. I still got to figure out tanks for these. How do you make spawning mops? Can you do a live demonstration? I do have a video on how to make those actually. Um, I, I'll grab some here in a second. Let me show off these guys real quick. This is a Pingu I guess. Pingu Guppy. We'll see. I'm not seeing a bunch of color on it yet. Should be a trio. But yeah, kind of excited about those. So I got to figure out a tank for those eggs and these guys. I'm wanting to put some 10 gallons over here. Probably put like 36 10 gallons and 340s. And then I should be done with tanks. Let's go see if I can get to a spawning mop with this actually kicking off. I do kind of want to make this video short. You can see it's been a mess in here. I was actually doing my shipments. I haven't been to bed yet since like yesterday morning. I pulled an all-nighter, was watching my son, doing my shipments while I was doing all that. Spawning mops, spawning mops. Some people use these. I don't like this. I've tried this, but the water like sticks to it. I don't know. I was trying that for tetra breeding and stuff. I wasn't a big fan though. Spawning mops. What I do is you get this yarn and you get you a book and you wrap it around the book. The yarn. Keep wrapping the yarn around the book. Then you cut down that and then you tie it at the end and bam you got a spawning mop. So it's not real hard. It's pretty much just like tying a bunch of yarn together. And I find that to work best because the eggs are kind of sticky. So they really grab the eggs and kind of hide them from the blue, blue galaris as well. Let's see, yeah. Okay. So let's see if there's finally any movement here. But I'm trying to make this a short video too for everybody later. That way they don't have to go through an hour's worth of footage to see something. I mean, really, if they don't hatch yet. Because what it really does, I use soft water, too, normally. When it comes to hatching them. But you could actually keep them in harder water, which most of my tanks are. But I braid them in soft water. Just that's mostly because of the eggs and stuff. The eggshell needs the softness. Man. Actually, I tell you what, I think let me check this tank here. I think this might be a soft water tank. I could probably put them in here. Which would be perfect. Get the good old trusty TD Met S meter out. Yeah, 180. That's around the softer side. So that'll be their new home. Let's just dump them in there. I actually want to drop the water level on that a little bit too, because I I don't know. I think I I've, I've been noticing I get a better success rate of the eggs when the water level has been lowered, because in nature they're used to being. Like these are laid into a dry bed after the uh, wet season's over and then the rain comes down and then that's what brings them back to life. Hey Lucas, do you mix RO water with your tap water or just use water for your soft water species? I do for my uh, soft water tanks, I do like a half and half blend of my tap water and my RO water. So I'm not sure how, oh I can do this. Let's see. Hook you guys up here. Do a quick. I gotta pull some water out of this real quick. Hopefully, I don't kick you guys off. Make sure 
sure this is going to be good for playback. Oh well. Well, what the heck. Sorry, taking you guys for a ride here. Try not to get it in the fish tank. <laughs> All right, there we go. Jeez Louise. Let me get some water out of there real quick, and then we'll put the eggs in there, and then maybe there'll be some babies. I want to try to do this quick, too, because like I said, I want to keep this a shorter video. Sweet. Good thing it's only a five gallon, so it won't take long to take water out of it. I'm going to leave about three inches, probably about. When you're being, breeding betas, too, you want to do the same thing. I mean, I bet it helps with a lot of species, too, like tetras or any that like to go up to the uh, surface of the water to get air. la di da -dee. All right, come on, hose. I do got a bigger hose for faster water changes. This one's kind of for the small tanks. I got one huge hose that'll rip the water out real fast. Alright, let's pull you guys back down from there. Give you guys a different view. So that's about where I got it now. This should be better for the fish. And now I'll just dump this in here. Let's check it real quick. Yeah, you see how that peat moss is all on the top, so there's not much room in there. So it will be better for me to actually put this in the tank. Because that can kind of snuff out the babies. So let's go ahead. Dang, I'm going to need a ladder. Hold on a second. Always got a ladder handy. This is the busted tank that the bottom seal went out on me the other day. Some of you guys follow me on Instagram and Facebook. You guys would have seen that. I didn't have a chance to video it or nothing. Let me see. What did I... Where did I put... Oh. Right there. All right. Get these guys in here. Just kind of slide them in. Make sure there's none in the container. This jostling will probably help them too get out of the uh, eggs a little bit. Because they'll get pelted with rain in the wild. I thought I saw something dart real quick. They're probably too tiny to see though. We'll go look at these juveniles real quick. Give you guys a uh, idea of what they will look like when they start hatching. These are actually only like maybe, I would say two or three weeks old. There's one over here in the corner. Kind of hard to see. Especially when they don't move. Oh, there we go. You look right in the center. There you see them moving. You can bet there's a couple of them darting around here and there. A lot of times I'll think that like none of them hatched after hatching them, and then look into the tank later, and there'll be a bunch of them in there. It's because they really hide in that peat moss. They're really good at camouflaging themselves. Like here was one right in the front. Yeah, see them moving. He's right in front of my face. If you don't see him, if they don't move, you don't really see him. Two of them there. So that's a couple weeks old. And this is probably like, I'd say a month or so. This one's starting to get some stripes on it. I had a batch weight earlier, and it may be like a month and a half old. But yeah, that's uh, how you guys breed blue googlaris killifish and yeah I'm not I don't think it'll be very easy to pick up any fry in here we'll give it one last look so if you guys got any questions real quick before I hop off here now's the time to ask about blue Glarus. but if not I'm not gonna hold my breath on these guys yet but I'll keep you guys updated too on these guys, how many hatch out, whatnot, all that jazz. 
So just keep watching. And I don't think, where did you get the peat moss? I actually got it off eBay. It's some organic stuff. Let me see here. Fire red shrimp back in stock yet. They will be soon. I've got lots of them. There's just lots of people asking for them, so I don't want to sell out. Outgrow.com is where I got these. But that's nice and organic. Yeah. CPD farm over here. Alright. Well, I appreciate all you guys watching. Until next time, uh, peace.